for love once again. I'm a big big girl. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Hello and welcome to Big Week. Big Week is a series that examines the life of lawyers who are not into litigation. Lawyers that have made a name for themselves in the niche area of the law that they have excelled in. I think a good lawyer, a successful lawyer, there are rewards. But I think giving somebody a, a title, especially in the context of Nigeria, where sometimes it becomes almost a title, I think that uh, senior advocates should be compensated for skill, compensated for hard work, compensated for reaching the top of the profession. We also need to understand um, that commercial lawyers who have also done well merit recognition. Yeah, yeah. You can even notice. Run down the moves, I got this. I love the practice. So. Welcome to another episode of Big Week. Day of Big Week. This week we get to meet and talk to one of perhaps one of the most recommended big wigs in the business. Um, he's been described as very welcoming and, and warm. Over 35 years experience in corporate and commercial practice and has been involved in the negotiation of complex commercial agreements for a wide variety of transactions. He's the chairman and one of the founding partners of our local and the Yibodi. Ladies and gentlemen, let us welcome Benga the Yibodi. Thank you. Is this what you've always wanted to do? You, I spoke to one or, one or two big weeks and they said, law happened. <laughs> but did you always want to be a lawyer? Uh, I actually think so. I think so. I, I didn't get here by accident. Um, I think um, it was what I, uh, I looked forward to do and it's what I've been doing for easily 40 years. Uh, and I enjoy every minute of it. Uh, you've kicked back now and you've sort of retired from major things. Uh, what do you do now? I, I, don't, I don't like that word retirement. <laughs> okay. Yeah. okay. So, so, so I stepped back from being chairman of the firm and what they say is of counsel. Mm -hmm. Counsel just says that I, I remain a part of the firm mm -hmm. uh, and when clients need my services, I, I would still come in and, and do the work that I need to do. Uh, but I think that it's important for all of us to think of how we reinvent ourselves uh, and what are the things that uh, come naturally to us. And after you've been doing something for 40 years, it's time to look at what else is out there. That's right. um, and so the law remains, uh, you know, uh, my passion. Uh, it remains that thing that I've been doing all my life. I'm not walking away from it. I'm just looking for other opportunities out there. Are there other opportunities oh. out there for, for, for somebody with 40 years experience? Oh, definitely, <laughs> definitely. I tell people that everything that's happened to me has happened because of the law. Has happened because uh, clients came into the firm, uh, recognized uh, what I was doing, recognized that um, I was good material for sitting on boards. Uh, and, and so, uh, will I walk away from that thing that actually set me up for the future? The answer is no. I, I'm, I'm curious about how you know um, lawyers, you know how they get on in boards. Like, <laughs> how do you work your way through these, you know, mega corporations? And, yeah. No, I, actually, it's very easy, very very easy. And and I've spent a lot of time mentoring and talking to uh, uh, people about opportunities and, and and sitting on boards. And what I say to them, my standard line is, be the best at what you are doing. People recognize you for being the best at what you do. They don't recognize you as being a director material on the board. They recognize you as being, it's a great lawyer, he's a great consultant, he's, he's good at what he does, he has people's skills. Um, and then they take a look at the board and say, we're looking for an independent director. Um, who's that person that we want to identify? Oh, they say there's this good lawyer that they know, you know, ethically does all the right things great corporate lawyer, great litigator, they say, oh, ah, by the way, we do have an opening for that kind of person on our board. So you don't go out there saying to your, uh, uh, advertising to say that, oh, I want to sit on boards. But if you are great at what you are doing, actually that recognition will come uh, and, and you, you'll be surprised at how many boards you get invited to sit on. There are people who look at people like you, uh, your strides, and, and they, they seek a roadmap. 
so to speak. Uh, maybe um, it happens in other cultures. Mm -hmm. Would you would you see yourself writing memoirs or a book on how to do this or you know? Definitely, definitely. Okay. I, I think I would be. Um, it would be a loss mm -hmm. if I didn't put um, my thoughts, my experiences, the pathway um, in writing. Uh, not necessarily for the next generation, but actually because we live in a society where people don't write. Um, there's uh, very little of contemporary Nigerian history uh, uh, and the lives of um, great men and women uh, that's out there for the next generation to actually read uh, and digest. And so for that reason, I've made a commitment to myself that I will write. Um, there's a story to be told. Um, doesn't mean that everybody would like the story or will read it, but I think it. Uh, but there's definitely. Oh, there, there is a story, and uh, it would be a great disservice if we didn't put those markers on the ground. You, you associated with teach. Yes. So, uh, will you see yourself, you know, doing some of that? Um, uh, look, look, teach. teach uh, so I'm, I'm chair of um, Teach for Nigeria. Nigeria yes. Uh, and I'm vice chair of Teach for All, which is which is a global uh, body. Uh, for me, uh, education. So why am I where I am today? It's because of education. Uh, you know, my mother tells the story all the time that the only thing that she has to leave uh, to her children uh, is a great education and the prayers uh, that she helps us with every day. My view is that we live in a part of the world where there's an education uh, conundrum. Uh, uh, there's education inequity and there's income inequality. How are you going to get past all these things? Uh, is that the level playing field that we always tell people that we, 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 we will present them with uh, has to be through education. It's the only way out of poverty. It's the only way out of ignorance. It's the only way to create wealth and create value. Uh, and so uh, when I look at, uh, I'm passionate about education. I'm passionate about uh, girl-child education. I'm passionate about um, you know the fact that um, in the country the size of Nigeria that we're still not hitting the critical markers that people tell us about. You know, that the indices that we see, uh, uh, total number, uh, the highest number of children out of school. Um, you know, those are the kind of things that we should pay attention to. The fact that you know, our teachers are not fit for purpose sometimes in yeah. certain parts of the country uh, where people refuse to even do continuous training. Uh, so I think it's important that we pay attention to these things and, and that's why I'm passionate about teaching particularly. Um, you know, there are all kinds of different levels of intervention around the education. There's creating infrastructure, creating the schools, uh, creating the classrooms. But we also have to remember that there must be teachers uh, uh, in these classrooms that will take the, the children along. I, I mean, I, I hear these days we hear the level of, of how bad teachers are. Uh, it, it's, it's very disturbing. Earlier on, we were sharing about um, the country and how things are, are, are declining. Um, from where you sit, um, do you see? Talking about elites and, and how we are all complicit, where, where does where does uh, leadership come from then, uh, especially as legal? Uh, you know, as legal. Look, I, I think you know one one of the things that gets my attention is how everything seems to be upside down, uh, and how sometimes it's extremely difficult to hold up a part of the uh, civil society space uh, uh, that you turn a searchlight on and you don't find problems. But in the middle of all of that, one of the things that gives me hope um, is that Nigerian professionals, the youth of our country, continue to shine in literally all spheres. Um, so there's almost no part of um, society outside, you know, on the continent, around the world, that you do not find outstanding Nigerians who have studied in Nigeria. So as much as it is that I complain about the education system, I also recognize that this system, uh, that a lot of us came out of this same system. Absolutely. We went to you know, high school here, we went to university here. We may have thrived uh, and succeeded, but 40 years down the line, I still see a pipeline of very, very energetic, very hardworking people, people who are committed to change, uh, and who at, at, at very young ages are being successful. So, so when you look at um, emigration, for instance, the reason 
certain countries are taking our best and brightest is because they see that they are capable. There's something that they, exactly. yeah, that they have from, exactly. here, from here. Yeah. So when, when you say Nigerian doctors and nurses are leaving, um, they pass all the requisite exams when they get uh, in there. the jurisdictions yes. that they're going. Yes. So yes. there must be something to be said for our universities. The problem is we yeah. just don't have enough for the total number of people who are applying. Um, uh, and, and in the middle of all of that, we still have a, a, a problem in the country where people are standing up and are leaving. Uh, in droves, by the way. Uh, um, and, and so those are the kind of things that we need to focus on, They're the kind of things that, you know, not just the elite, the political class, all of us need to put our heads uh, together and say to ourselves that, you know, whatever is making these young people leave, we do need to stop this. Uh, it's no longer drip, drip, drip. This, uh, they're voting with their feet, uh, and it's time to stop that. When you, when you look at the quality of lawyers that you guys employed when you started yes. out and, and, and what, what you have now, how does it compare? Uh, you know, again, as I said, <laughs> I, I'm, I'm, I'm pleasantly surprised. Um, look, uh, over the last 40 years, one of the things that I have seen is the quality of Nigerian lawyers at the very top, you know, so I'd say to you, which is typical around the world, the top 10% top of the class will, will always do well wherever they are in the world. So if you run a law firm that says we will only do first class and 2-1, what you tend to find is after a couple of years with us, they go off and do LLMs in the best schools in the world. That's right. Um, you know, it's it's actually funny. Uh, they say that the New York Bar is one of the most difficult exams in the world. We tend to find Nigerian lawyers who, after a master's degree uh, uh, in the U.S., pass New York Bar at the very first try. What that proves to me is that the quality is good, uh, that our universities continue to produce uh, great uh, lawyers, and that we uh, in law firms continue to train good lawyers uh, and so um, we just need to increase the numbers um, you know such that it's not just the top 10 percent of the class but maybe you know the 50 percent of the class meets those uh, uh, the criteria that's set but but I'm very very um, uh, uh, happy with what I see and and those standards by the way have not dropped mm -hmm. and, and for me that's that's a good sign uh, you know you, you did mention it you did say let's get more than that 10 percent yeah. because uh, the disparity between that 10% and, and the rest it's, it's, of the, it's, it's, it is it's, so, it is it's so sharp. It's a, it's a sharp. <laughs> <laughs> and, and talking about the New York bar, you, yeah. you are you are like a precursor of that yes. whole uh, yes. uh, trend. Why did you, you, why didn't you stay back? Or, uh, I, you know, there were a bunch of us at that time who decided we wanted to do a master's degree. The typical thing was that because we are Anglophiles, a lot of my friends went to the UK. A few of us went off to the States, uh, and, and I think it was really that new world approach, you know. Um, people tend to think that um, the American um, uh, legal system is a bit strange, uh, but it isn't. It's common law based, um, you know, actually American jurisprudence uh, has, uh, has left, uh, uh, you know, uh, the rest of the world behind. Um, you may argue about the different um, ways that they've pushed the envelope. But the reality is that they're thinking at all the time about the constitution, about you know commercial law, about you know how uh, is law fit for purpose, um, which which it must be, um, you know, um, very unlike us here where we still have on our books uh, English laws of a hundred years ago. Um, you know, th this is a, a, a system that continues to push the envelope um, for the good. Um, mm -hmm. and, and so I decided to go off to the U.S. at that time, went to the University of Pennsylvania, did my LLM, mm -hmm. took the New York Bar, worked at White and Case. Um, and my view was, look, if you have the opportunity, please do it. Um, you know, I, I tend to tell the story that I was in a hurry. I did everything I needed to do in a hurry. It was like, um, you know, somebody had lit a fire under me. But my view of life was that um, if you have these opportunities, please just do what you have to do. But, but the real thing for me, that experience, was seeing how law firms were run, uh, seeing how the systems worked. Um, and I did both uh, um, worked in a law firm and an in-house counsel. I worked for Gulf Oil uh, in Houston and in Lagos, um, you know, before the Chevron uh, uh, acquisition in those days. 
uh, and saw how in-house counsel and, and, and law firms worked and knew exactly what, uh, for me, what I wanted to do thereafter. What was the vision of Malukoye? The vision was to be a world-class law firm, uh, was to be a partnership-based uh, law firm, was to be a full-service uh, practice. Uh, in a way that, um, I, look, uh, in, in the early 80s, the only real law firms in the country were uh, uh, family-run practices. Um, you know, um, people tended to assume that, you know, because the father was a great lawyer, his children would be the same. Um, uh, you know, that lawyers were fungible. We know today that that's not true. Um, and so for, you know, for somebody that didn't come from a, a legal background, a legal uh, a family that had lawyers, and I mean, today there are lots of us that had lawyers in my family. But the reality for me was that we needed to create the kind of law firm that I had worked in New York, that I had seen, that uh, uh, thrived around the world. Um, uh, and, and so that was the vision. Uh, and the only way you could do that was to create a platform for other people to come and to join. Today there are 19 partners in this firm. We're the biggest law firm in the country. Uh, uh, um, but for me, it was um, understanding that that's the future. The future has to be that you create a platform for other people to come on board. Um, this is not driven by family. Uh, uh, my son wants to go to law school, but if he does go to law school, um, he's going to have to fight his way uh, through it. Um, he's not going to get a corner office just because he asks for it. Mm -hmm. You, you already mentioned, I was going to ask if, you know, uh, you come from a line of lies, but oh. you already mentioned it. But you, you got the support that, you know, because parental support for, oh, yeah. for, for, for that is very important. Um, who did you look up to? I mean, yes, you were, you, you ran through everything, mm -hmm. you know, mm -hmm. right, but when you were growing up, you wanted, you were starting out as a young lawyer, who, who was your... Uh, it's funny, I, 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 um, people ask me the question a lot. Uh, I have one name that um, always stands out. Um, uh, and it's uh, Chief uh, Chris Obumanjo. Okay. Um, and why? Because as a, uh, a young man in university in those days, uh, this was um, the mid 70s, one of the things that I used to do a lot of, and my mother was a very avid uh, 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 investor. So she bought lots of shares at the time during indigenization between 75 and, and 77 when um, uh, companies were being listed. So I'd come home on holidays um, and she'd get all these annual reports. So I'd open these annual reports. And for some reason, there were a couple of names that were always consistent. Chris Obadjo. Chris Obadjo. He, you know, he, did, he did the IPOs, he did the listings, he advised all the major companies. And by the way, he also sat on their boards. Mm. Uh, and I said to myself, this is the kind of lawyer that I would like to be. Uh, a man who built a successful practice, is recognized for his hard work, um, you know, uh, uh, the major multinational clients in the country uh, gravitate towards his firm, and then they have a lot of confidence in him when they ask him to sit on their boards. Um, and, and, and so, um, didn't meet him for many years, by the way, um, but uh, from a, a role model perspective, I always kept my eye on him. So today I tell young people there, uh, seek out the mentors. And if you can't find how to engage with them, please use them as role models. Take a look at them and say, this is the kind of person I want to be. Keep an eye on what they do. Uh, and it doesn't have to be anybody that's living. Please read a lot about people that uh, have gone in the past, but understand uh, that there's not very much you are doing today that hasn't been done before. Uh, and, and there's a lot to learn uh, from the lives of great people. It's, a, it's, it's very difficult to find any successful uh, commercial uh, corporate law, mm -hmm. lawyer today in Nigeria yeah. that does not have one sort of reference to oh, Chris Obumanjo. You, you'll be surprised. It's, it's, um, at least in, in my generation, I know, I know lots of people uh, uh, that that's where they started. Yes. Um, you know, they learned a lot at the feet of, uh, of Chief uh, and, um, and they credit him. Oh, yes. You know, um, they credit him for that trajectory. Um, I spoke to yeah. George and told me uh, as well. Oh, yes, George, as well, yes. uh, you, know, um, uh, you know, the whole theory around people tend to forget sometimes. Uh, uh, 
you know, uh, 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 you know, um, actually uh, started out, um, you know, from Chris Ogumanju and Co. So, so I think it's important to to give credit where it is due. Did, did you did you like litigation or at all, or or it was just a question of well, this is the the line I wanted to and see. I, I did I did a little bit of litigation at the beginning. Actually, didn't mind doing it. What I didn't like about it was just the inefficiencies around the court system. Uh, I promise you, if we could have done it in a more efficient way, I would have stayed in litigation. Uh, but um, just because I was, uh, I just didn't, I just didn't think that this was an efficient way of doing of doing business. Uh, a situation where you spend ten years in court and you know you get all the way to get all the way to the Supreme Court and all kinds of different um, uh, uh, interim orders and interlocutory orders and you know things that derailed from you know what you wanted to do. Uh, and very quickly said to myself, look, where are your skills best deployed? What do you do best? You know, what, what um, you know, and, and because I'm a people person, huh, uh, I found that I, 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 for me, building a network comes naturally. My ability to walk into a room and engage people in conversation. Um, so what do great corporate lawyers do? That's what we do. You know, yes, we know the law, but you, you first have to convince the person. Uh, and before they give you work, they have to first like you. Mm -hmm. uh, and, and sometimes that's a missing message that people tend not to see. You, you want to be the best at what you do. By the way, you do have to be the best at what you do, but you also need to have uh, 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 you know, the skills that allow you to I'm engage. Sure, yeah. yes. um, I, I don't know if it is, if it is not, if it is non communication or if younger lawyers or young law students don't get to read about commercial law practice mm -hmm. enough mm -hmm. but there is this mortal fear of litigation mm -hmm. <laughs> you know amongst uh, the young lawyers yeah. I, I remember that one of the things that i said to myself from the beginning when i was studying law is that i wasn't going to do mm -hmm. practice litigation i was just going mm -hmm. to face um, my my area mm -hmm. and, and do more um, copyright matters, you know. Um, what what advice do you have for young lawyers who 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 are coming into 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 let, practice? Let, let me tell you, I think we should do it the way we do it here, mm. which is we do a rotation for youth coppers. So people come with this same trepidation uh, mm. around litigation. Ah, you know, there's too time consuming. They're on the road all the time. Cases are always adjourned. They go to Ikeja, go to all these different courts. The court, court didn't sit today. So it's okay. Actually, you shouldn't make up your mind based on that. Let's do a rotation through the departments in the firm. So you do some corporate work, you do some capital markets work, you do litigation. After that rotation, if you decide that you don't want litigation, all well and good. But please don't make up your mind on the basis of uh, anecdotal evidence. Um, and, 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 and what we tend to find Actually, if, you say, if, if, if I uh, were to admit, um, the lawyers I respect the most are people who have both skills, an ability to do litigation, an ability to come into a corporate meeting and engage uh, the same way that some of us who, that's all we do. Uh, and, I, and, and so if I had to redo it all over again, I actually wouldn't leave litigation that quickly. Mm -hmm. uh, I would have stayed. Uh, doesn't mean that I'll continue it, but I think that a deeper understanding of how litigation affects, um, litigation strategy, for instance, affects what we do uh, on the co corporate commercial side of a firm, so that you don't quickly rush to judgment. Uh, you understand that even when a client says to you, well, I'm going to go to court, you say to him, excuse me, um, you know, let me tell you, um, the, the, you know, let's sit down, let's, let's see if we can reach a settlement. If we don't get to a settlement, let's go to arbitration or let's go through mediation uh, because by the time we get to full-blown litigation, uh, we need to understand that it's not going to be open and closed. Uh, it's going to take some time and it's important that you know that. Uh, one, of, one or two of the big wigs that I spoke to about, you know, um, the privilege, privileges, uh, yeah. there is an argument that for sanction, 
do you feel that there should be some kind of reward too for people in the in corporate, in look, corporate look, law? Look, 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 I mean, um, my... What the financial thing, rewards are the I no, no, I, I don't, I don't even think it's about financial rewards because the litigators too at the very top of the practice, whether they are silk or not, uh, get financial rewards. I, I would say that it's really about um, this fused bar that we have. So that's my concern. Look, uh, in a fused bar where um, litigators become senior advocates of Nigeria, what you tend to then say is that not only are they the most senior lawyers, they are also reputedly the best lawyers. Now that's a problem. That's the only problem that I see. And look, you, you know, if you want to give somebody silk on the basis that as a litigator, he's entitled to it, I have no problem with that. But please don't assume that the tradition, the English tradition of a barrister that says that a QC is a senior lawyer should translate in a fused bar to a senior advocate being more senior uh, than somebody who's paid his dues as a commercial lawyer. Now, I have a problem with that. Um, and, and I see it happen all the time. Um, but um, I don't, I, you know, people tend to say, oh, but the, um, the financial rewards uh, should be enough for a, a commercial lawyer. I'm not, I don't, I, you know, that's um, stating the obvious. Huh? Uh, I think a good lawyer, a successful lawyer, um, there are rewards. But I think, um, um, giving somebody a, a title, um, especially in the context of Nigeria where sometimes it becomes almost a title. I think that uh, senior advocates should be compensated for skill, compensated for hard work, compensated for, um, uh, for reaching the top of the profession. Uh, uh, but um, we also need to understand um, that commercial lawyers uh, who have also done well uh, merit uh, recognition. Um, you know, um, I, I tell people the story. Uh, so when my partner, Bankole Aluko, uh, uh, my co-founder at that time, became um, a senior advocate of Nigeria, uh, Justice Muri Okwala of Blessed Memory called me uh, and he said, you know, he prayed for me and said, congratulations, Bankole has made senior advocate. He said to me, he said, you know, uh, unbeknownst to him, he was talking about uh, my mentor, but he said, um, you know, that um, senior solicitor of Nigeria, the kind that they didn't give Chris Ogubanjo, that's the one I pray that they give you. Now that sent, that was a deep signal uh, to me because all he was saying was that, by the way, those of you that don't get senior advocate of Nigeria, merit your own recognition. Uh, um, and it's a kind of recognition that, you know, somebody that I looked up to, uh, um, you know, has, right? doesn't have it in a title, but has it in recognition. Yeah. In fact, what the, the philosophy behind Big Wig is to, you know, seek out uh, commercial corporate yeah. lawyers who are at the top of the, of, of the profession. Uh, talking about a fused bar, would you rather we have, uh, like, the English system where it's separated or... Look, you look it, 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 it only... It is only, um, that's where the tradition came from. Yes. Uh, so this one that we've done is a mix. Uh, um, and I'm not sure that we're getting the best of it. Yeah. So, so the Nigerian Bar Association and the traditions of the Nigerian Bar Association and the traditions of the bar become uh, the template for all of us, even though half of us don't go to court. Now, there's a misnomer in that. That's right. Um, on top of that is the fact that um, in this part of the world, we're not even changing. So the same thing that we've had for, you know, since then, yeah, you know, we continue it without a recognition of how does this thing affect, um, you know, the way we operate? What should we do better? Um, isn't it time to reinvent the structure? Shouldn't we negotiate how these things should be done? Um, and, and, and so for me, it's part of the concerns I have about the way we do things. We do them in a, this media board way in which, you know, something that we've done over and over and over again. And we know that, by the way, the results we're getting aren't what we expect, but we continue to do them. Um, and, and so it's time to actually sit back and say, what, what's the way forward? What has 
kept your interest in, 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 in the practice? Um, my personal philosophy of life is that life is a marathon, it's not a sprint. And that um, no matter how well you think you're doing, always recalibrate um, and, and almost start all over again. Uh, and it's the only way that you can keep um, um, ahead of the game, if I can put it that way. Uh, and, it's, and it's the only way you can stay relevant. Because um, there are you know, all kinds of different, um, you know, the way we practiced in the 80s isn't the way we are practicing today, for instance. Um, and millennials and Generation Z, uh, they have a totally different approach um, to work. Um, the pandemic has taught us that um, are we all going to go back to do to doing uh, five, six days a week in the office, um, working 10 hours a day? Um, it doesn't look likely. Yeah? We may get back to our wicked ways, but it's not looking like that just yet. Um, and I think it's part of the whole recalibration uh, that I think all of us must do. So I, I, I stay focused on the objective. The objective is to keep ahead of the game, to remain um, uh, one of the leading firms in the country. Um, to be, to have around me the best and brightest that we can find in the marketplace, um, to be a, 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 a destination for good legal work for for client satisfaction, um, and and if you if you think you've achieved, um, what tends to happen is that somebody comes and overtakes you, so it keeps us on our toes uh, and we continue to do what we know how to do. Technology has, you know, democratized the space. Uh, in fact, it has actually expanded the limits of the law. Um, how, how, how have you, have you, embr do you embrace oh, it? Oh, technology is the only answer to what we're doing. Um, look, uh, I remember um, in the early 80s um, at White and Case. Um, so before I left in Nigeria, I could, you know, I remember us using telex machines. And I got to White and Case, and, and there were fax machines. And the fax machines were as big as uh, today's photocopiers. Eh? You know, and burying that, um, away yes. and winding away, and you were rushing to grab your, your paper. They came on thermal paper, you tore it off the machine, you know, quickly read what you, you know. The reality is that it keeps moving. So in today's world, um, you know, uh, a few years ago, some of us thumbed our noses at, uh, at WhatsApp, you know. You couldn't send a legal uh, document by WhatsApp. Today, you almost have no choice. You know, the client says to you, I'm going to send it to you by WhatsApp. You better, you know, <laughs> take it and, and read it, uh, you know, and, and save it. Uh, so I think that technology is a, is a game changer. Uh, it makes us a lot more efficient by the way people are able to work from home. Um, people are able to, to be, uh, uh, you know, I know that um, uh, my associates won't like it, but it's a 24-7 world out there. So you, send, you send emails, you expect to respond. You send messages, you expect to respond. You are not, you know, you can send someone on a Friday night. In the old days, you wouldn't ask for a response till maybe a Monday morning. Now, you expect that um, uh, if the person is sleeping Saturday morning, they'll respond. I can only receipt and say, well, I'll work, I'll look at this and I'll respond. Um, at least automated, automated response, yeah. at least to, yeah. to say, so to yes, say well, I have it. Yes. I'm on the road, I'm on a flight, you know, mm -hmm. I'm, you know, I'm on vacation, but my assistant will pick this message up. Right. You know, so so all of these things, uh, uh, it's an interconnected world out there. Uh, and technology makes us more efficient, by the way. So, can, can we talk about some of the groundbreaking transactions that, that you've been uh, Look, I've done, I've done lots of things. Lots of things. Um, which, uh, which, 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 which is the, the, ones that, the, ones, the, the ones that come to mind? Yes. Um, you know, we were part of the, the MTN uh, initial uh, auction coming into Nigeria. The firm represented MTN uh, through that auction, um, through MTN paying what looked like an impossible price uh, uh, in 2001, um, which today, uh, when you look back 20 years... It was, that um, was quite... That was quite uh, we, we, are, we are on the sidelines wondering if this was even possible. Exactly. Because it seemed like an impossible uh, thing. Exactly. You know, that 200, is 280 said. million dollars all at, at the time. Uh, and, and, and it happened and it's worked. Uh, and you see the significant investment. Uh, uh, and you know, to be part of what I think of as a groundbreaking transaction. One which was um, a very transparent auction. Made Nigeria look uh, uh, like a country that understood uh, 
that you couldn't just issue licenses to your friends. Went through a, a bid process. Um, nobody complained uh, that there were funny deals being done. Um, and at the end of the bid, if you know you lost your deposit if you couldn't pay, you know, and they moved on to the next person. So, so the reality of that process was that it was actually a thing of pride to be part of a process. Um, that when you look back 20 years and you look at um, uh, uh, what telecommunications has done to Nigeria, uh, uh, it, you know, a, a part of, uh, of the system that's over 10% of GDP uh, from, from almost nothing. Um, you know, 400,000 lines at that time and today you're talking 160 million cell phones. Those are significant achievements. So to have been there when it happened, for me, it was a, was a major, major, major. Uh, we did the original NLNG uh, uh, transactions, you know, again, to be part of um, uh, uh, trains three and four, uh, of, of that kind of development. Uh, uh, when you look at the LNG company today, um, again, a global company uh, uh, with shareholders from around the world, uh, but remains one of those kind of secrets that Nigerians don't pay attention to mm -hmm. in Bonny Island that you can have a company that could be anywhere in the world and has efficiently done what it's meant to be doing, uh, paying dividends to the Nigerian nation uh, uh, from uh, uh, reduced flaring of gas uh, uh, in the Niger Delta. Those kind of transactions are cutting edge, um, you know, and, and you learn from them and you always look at them as, uh, you know, this is what uh, I set out to do, um, you know, be part of the change that our, our country needs. Uh, and do, 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 do these transactions equate your career highlights as well? Uh, I'd like to think so. I'd like to think so. I mean, you know, I tell people that um, one of the funny things about um, democracy, uh, when you get it right, is that prior to 1999, uh, the only people that made money in Nigeria had to have had some relationship with government. Mm -hmm. Post-99, um, uh, with the coming of democracy, the reality is that um, you, you then found um, almost self-made business people. Huh? Um, and there were lots of transactions in the initial or uh, first term. Lots of things happened. It was an opening out of the marketplace. Um, and, and so for me, uh, yes, I'd been doing a lot of stuff before then, but actually that was a, a, a watershed moment uh, of, of uh, the firm just literally took off um, and we were there doing the things that we wanted to do. But I think that on the whole, I also say this with respect to the arts. I think the return of democracy, what it also did was that um, Nigerian music, Nollywood, literature, uh, uh, you know, the fine arts. Um, it was almost a renaissance for all of us in the country. It was a, it was a great time uh, to be Nigerian, um, you know, uh, uh, and, and everything seemed to be, you know, uh, all you had to do was dream and work hard at it and you could achieve it. Um, and, and so it was, you know, the, for, for me, they were extremely heady, heady days, but, but they worked. Yeah. In fact, uh, to use the word relations is, is, is probably the best way to describe that that, 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 that yeah, yeah. Uh, we took a left turn after that period. Well, <laughs> it well, has been down well, here. Well, you know, we're, we're, we're eternal optimists. <laughs> yeah. So, so you know, there's a there's a view that you know, uh, which I subscribe to that you know, you know, the, uh, we just need to work hard and, and regain lost territory, uh, and, and that's that's the hope and prayer. Outside of legal profession, yes. you know, um, let's talk about leisure and, mm -hmm. and some of your personal indulgence. Uh, is art one of them? Oh, art is. Um, I'm passionate about art. I'm passionate about um, um, you know, and I, 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 not to mistake. I, I, I say it's an investment in the arts. Huh? Um, I think it's important to support the arts. I think it's important to. Um, um, you know, to invest in it. I think. I think that um, just as I talked about the renaissance of you know, so so I, um, you know, one of the things I do a lot of is I, I read a lot. Huh? And I say to myself, look, you know, um, you must be constantly um, learning. Uh, and one of the ways to learn, um, you know, I, I never used to do audio books 
uh, used to carry physical books around. And then I discovered all your books and I said, oh my God, I wish I had done this earlier. Um, and, and, do six no, it's, uh, <laughs> and, and, and it's so funny how the brain can um, essentially um, retain the important things uh, such that you can refer to them. Um, uh, so, so reading, keeping up to speed um, with developments around the world is one of the things that I do a lot. Um, philanthropy is one of the things that uh, I'm passionate about. I think in a society like ours, where you can see the uh, you can see the gaps, the disconnect, uh, uh, it would be ridiculous to be successful in this society and not give back. Uh, because then, what's it about? Uh, it, can, it has to be more than of self. Um, and, and so, for me, um, whether it's giving back in education or giving back, um, you know, uh, uh, even even uh, uh, in agriculture. And, and, and I say that to mean that um, we need to get away from this subsistence farming. Um, the rest of the world has moved ahead in plantation farming. Um, but we're still just, you know, we think that the, um, farming has to be hard work. Well, by the way, everything is hard work, but, but you also have to do it in a mechanized way. Um, you have to have smallholder schemes that will take um, local communities along so that they don't lose jobs, they don't lose land, which is all they have. Um, but I think it's, um, you know, the, the different ways of, of intervention uh, and some of the more um, important things that I do today are all around philanthropy, sitting on boards that, um, that we're giving back. Uh, highlighting things that are important. I sit on a bunch of other boards where, you know, people say to me, why why are you gravitating towards music, for instance? Uh, but I'm a great jazz lover. You can't, yes, you can't I saw, I saw the, the Carnegie Hall. <laughs> yeah. so, so I sit on the Carnegie Hall board. I sit on the Jazz and the Lincoln Center board in New York. For me, those are things that, um, you know, growing up in a society where, um, uh, uh, as a young man, um, you know, used to go to, uh, uh, at the shrine, you know, um, uh, uh, you know, I, I think it's important um, to uh, keep busy, but also with things that you're passionate about, so that it's not just about keeping busy. It's about looking for ways to um, to build, rebuild the network, but also about the things that you enjoy doing. Do you play any instrument? Uh, uh, you know, on my, my bucket list. <laughs> <laughs> my bucket list has all kinds of instruments that, that I'm waiting, you know. Uh, because as a jazz lover, you probably love, love the saxophone, but no, you've never yeah, had the time. Yeah, yeah, the, the saxophone and the piano. Uh, I say to myself that, look, you know, these are things that I must, it's important. Uh, I, can't, I can't just, uh, you know, I, I, I love listening to music. I need, I need to be able to play. Um, yeah, so. Do you have a favorite Nigerian musician in the, among the young, ah, young, the young no, talks now? You, you ask me a question that, uh, you ask me a question, you know. That will know. offend. <laughs> <laughs> um, so, so um, one of the things I, you know, it's, this is a bit crazy. I mean, I'm in and out of the gym a lot. And I find that when I'm listening to particular musicians, I, I overdo. <laughs> so they motivate me. Yeah. Uh, so, so you, you know, from, from who, who, whiskey who, to, yeah. to all, you know, it's... It's, it's uh, a playlist. So oh. with, with Apple, again, technology, with Apple, you can... And, and, and it's, a, it's a great time to be Nigerian and to be watching these oh, musicians. Oh, and, yes. You know, again, we talked about the Renaissance. It's, it's a great time to see all of this coming out of... of of, of the yes, country. Yes. It's a uh, fantastic It's time. an amazing time for our arts. Um, yeah. And the home sold for over a million pounds, yeah. or about a million pounds. So, <laughs> yeah. yes. Yes. Yeah. It, it, it's been uh, really nice talking to you. And there are so many things that you are involved in. I, when, you, when you were talking about agriculture, I remember that you are on the board of Okumu. Yes, yes. I've been chairman of Okumu for many yeah. years. Yes. Uh, and I tell people that my, uh, you know, I may come from Ekiti. <laughs> Oh, my second home is uh, 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 is Ovia Southwest, which is where the plantation is. The plantation is in Ovia. Uh, my wife is an Ekiti woman. Are you serious? Yes. Yes. Ah, yes. So I come from Ekole Ekiti. <laughs> uh, uh, and, and, and people so do you like Pond Oh my God. Oh my God. Uh, you know, the fact that me and you are trying to keep fit <laughs> is, a pro is a problem. Is a problem. <laughs> but no. No, and I spent um, I spent five years of my life in Christ Quadrilateral. 
I went to Christ school. Yeah. So I know I know the whole of that area. Extreme new one. Extreme new one. So you're a, you're a proper homeboy. Oh, I'm a, I'm a homeboy. I'm a how, homeboy. Do, do, you, how, do, you, do you like Igbo people go home uh, for Christmas? It, it, you know, the funny thing about, um, uh, uh, you know, increasingly the roads are worse. Yes. It's taking you longer to get home. Security, um, security is also an issue. So, so the trips are a bit few and far between. Um, but, you know, um, my early years were in that environment. So, I, you know, my, my love for for you know I, I, I tell people that the most rural parts of Nigeria are some sometimes the most beautiful the hills of Ekiti they you know you as you drive around um you know I used to joke about how you you'd stop uh, on the road in the uh, driving in Ekiti and you'd ask him um, you'd see a farmer on his bike pushing his bike so you'd ask him in Yoruba that you know you're trying to get to Ilukwedu Ekiti and he would reply you in English because actually um, the Ekitis just invested, you know, the, the, the action group investment in education is why we think of excellence in education as the only thing that, you know, um, and, and so, you know, uh, uh, I, I, I still, I look back at those years with nostalgia. Growing up in, in Midwestern, yeah. Bendel, we thought it was just a myth no. that <laughs> the whole Ondo and the Kitty thing that, oh, yeah. you find three professors or four professors no, no, no. In, in one, I, in I one family. Probably, I promise you, in my family, at the last count, at the last count, there were, there were four professors. Uh, 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 don't worry, I'm the only one. That, I'm the only one that I uh, manage with. Uh, I got a second degree. But, uh, but, you, know, you, you don't measure. I, 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 don't, I, I don't count how many PhDs we have. Oh my yeah, god! But but very very typical of, yeah. of the families. Before we leave, I, I must ask you. You know, uh, the, the the law work is can be sedentary as well. Mm. So long hours. How do you keep a healthy routine? So, Boys need to stay alive <laughs> and well. You, you know how um, you know uh, uh, you're young. You think you're invincible. You don't really need to do very much. Your body just reacts to you. As I got older, um, you know, your body sends you signals mm -hmm. of uh, you know how it, it needs. It actually now needs help. Um, and and so I was not a, an exercise person um, when I was younger. But as I got into my fifties, I I just started spending a bit more time in gyms. Um, I, I traveled a lot, I packed a bag with me every time I went somewhere. Um, I'm in and out of the gym these days um, easily three to four times a week. When I don't run, I ride a bike. Um, uh, I try and eat healthy. Um, you know, food doesn't digest very well <laughs> as, as you get older. But I think, um, you know, um, the, the moral of the story for me really is just that um, it's important to, to do the right things. Um, uh, as you, not necessarily as you go older. You don't, don't, actually, wait, don't wait until you get I, I, Actually, what I tend to find is that um, uh, I'm able to think better. Um, you know, I come out of the gym, you know, sometimes before I get into the office in the morning, I've done my 10,000 steps, um, you know, which is a great thing because you then, you are full of energy and ready to go. So I think a healthy lifestyle is definitely a way to go. Thank you very much. Thank you. And that's, that's, that's like a very good place to, to bring this to you. Thank you. Thank you. So thank you very much. Good, 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 good to talk to you. Thank you. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, sadly, we have to go. This session has been a rewarding uh, session with Benga for your body. Um, his shoes might look a bit too big for young lions, but if you strive and, and and be all you can be, be the best you can be at what you do. You probably will fill those shoes and even make bigger shoes for other generations of lawyers to come. Uh, who is our next big wig? We'll find out on the next episode of The Big Wig. My name is Richard Fedami Joe, and we are out.
Nothing but magic, oh. Nothing but magic, oh. Eh. Listen, you know you can be creative. Oh. Can even make you a native. Yeah, yeah. You know you can rap or sing. 